Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Uh, you know, the WHO motto has been test, test and test. And the debate ongoing here is that India is simply not testing enough. Initially, the ICMR, I think, did that because they did not want to panic the population. Officially, ICMR has not accepted that there is community transmission, though uh, I, I think not. there are many people who are not convinced of that. How do you look at India's record on testing? And we have the usual problem. We have a shortage of the RT-PCR uh, kits. Uh, and but, and I'm just wondering what the WHO assessment is of India specifically on testing. So the WHO puts out guidance uh, on testing. And in fact, today we've updated the lab guidance uh, on testing. And, you know, it depends on where each country is in, um, uh, in the evolution of, of this uh, pandemic. And initially, I think India had a really good approach uh, and put in motion very quickly the, the testing that was needed for travelers at all entry points and uh, were able to pick up a number of people who were infected and were able to quarantine them. There was very good contact tracing done and follow up. But we know the limitation is that uh, this kind of entry screening is not sensitive to pick up everybody. Many people slip through the cracks and, and those people are the ones who go in and start spreading the uh, infection in the community. Now, it takes some time for those one or two sporadic cases to infect enough people for it to become visible. So, so what is needed really is a surveillance mechanism which goes beyond the testing at the points of entry, but also look at look what's going on in the community. And, you know, this is something that's, again, one of the principles of public health is to have a strong, strong surveillance system which India had developed uh, for polio, one of the best, most excellent systems that has withstood the test of time. Uh, not only were we able to control polio, but uh, we were able to keep a really wonderful, you know, good eye on it and pick up any kind of uh, vaccine-derived uh, polio viruses which may be circulating. Mm. So that's been a real success story and demonstrating that it is possible to do public health surveillance. We have an IDSP network. We have a network of laboratories that are run by the ICMR, the viral diagnostic labs. But every district is also supposed to have now a system to, to uh, monitor what's going on in terms of infections, in terms of deaths. You know, this is what good public health surveillance. So if you find a cluster uh, of diarrhea somewhere or a cluster of people who have uh, a, a, you know particular kind of illness? You know, when, you, when we have these AES outbreaks, uh, we suddenly see a cluster of children who are getting admitted with encephalitis. Like so, so that immediately alerts the local response to go and investigate the outbreak to find out what it is and to take immediate measures. So, yeah. so that community surveillance, to my knowledge, has not picked up. Uh, to date any unusual activity, but this is something that we have to keep uh, an eye on. Now, in terms of the testing strategy, uh, uh, certainly I think when you compare with the global uh, scenario and what other countries have done, India's testing uh, has been limited to those who had this uh, history of travel or history of contact. And um, I know that very recently uh, it has been expanded now to cover people who have symptoms of severe acute respiratory illness uh, or SARI um, in order to uh, make sure that, you know, a lot of the pneumonia cases may not be due to this. So I think in the coming days, we should get that data. Simultaneously, it would be helpful to know what's going on in terms of real community spread or not. I think one has to establish that. And you can't do it without the data. So what we are recommending is that uh, countries undertake zero epidemiological studies. So what that means is that we look for antibodies in a subset of the population um, and do it in an age stratified way and you know rural, urban, etc. So that you get from that what you will get is an idea of whether people in the community have been exposed to this virus um, because then they develop antibodies. 
define can i ask you to clarify sorry to interrupt you i just want you to elaborate on this antibodies testing because i was talking earlier to uh, you know people who who run major uh, laboratories microbiologists and they said that it takes time for the antibody to develop and therefore we simply do not have that kind of time and and as a lay person i wasn't able to count to that so in terms of testing is it that you would recommend the the tests kits that are, that india is currently using or would you say that we need to move to antibodies testing or is there a third way to test i know south korea in particular was able to test very effectively so what should india be doing and should we be moving to this antibodies testing instead of what we're doing right now or in addition to that's a very good point so to be very clear the testing that india is using currently and that may all other countries are using for the diagnosis the detection of people who have the infection is the molecular test the pcr test the test that looks for the rna of the virus you have to yes. take the sample from the person and then you have to run the pcr uh, and and obviously that requires some infrastructure in a lab and, and that i know now scaled up uh, both government and private labs that finds out if a person has infection now the antibody test antibodies take a few days to develop and there are many kinds of antibodies but the important ones are IgM and IgG the IgM develops within a week the IgG sometimes could take a bit longer maybe 10 to 14 days so what you would get from the antibody test is not would not be helpful to find out if a person is infected or not what it would do if you did it in a large number is to tell you 1% 3% 5% of the population has been exposed to the virus and has developed antibodies and what that tells you is how prevalent is the infection in the community if you get 0.1% let's say uh, you know you would then decide your the measures that you want to put in place based on that versus if you're having 10% of the people who are already infected um, and and also this helps you if you do it at regular intervals it may also help you to monitor how the outbreak is proceeding in your in your in your country um, you know people have talked about herd immunity people have talked about the population developing an immunity and so on uh, that's the way to to assess it by doing the antibody tests so you would recommend the antibodies test in addition to what we're already doing yes 